We need to talk about the new werewolves pack for The Sims 4. The pack officially comes out tomorrow, but I've got early access right now. Just to clarify, I'm not being paid. This video is not sponsored. I just have early access so that I can play it and review it for all of you. And so in this video, I want to walk you through what comes in the pack, the pros and cons of it, in my opinion, and whether or not I think it's worth buying. Because that's the real question, right? Like, is this pack actually worth the $20? Now, I will say that when I first heard about this pack, I did not have the greatest expectations. In fact, I was kind of scared of it. I think for a couple of reasons. Number one, I just just don't really play with occult sims. Like, I never play with vampires or spellcasters, and so I didn't really think that I would care about werewolves. And so when they first started teasing it, I was kind of like, well, whatever, that, that'll probably be cool, but I personally won't use it very much. But also, I was kind of scared about how the werewolves would look. I just couldn't picture what a werewolf would look like in The Sims 4. It was very hard for me to imagine in my mind what it would end up being like, and I was sort of worried about it, kind of going off of The Sims 3 werewolves, which were very scary. In The Sims 3, they were very human, but just kind of like angry looking humans with a lot of hair. You see what I mean though, right? Like it, it just looks like an angry person, basically. It's very much not werewolfy in my opinion, so I was kind of nervous about how that would translate to The Sims 4. And they went in a completely opposite direction. In The Sims 4, the werewolves are like fully dog, just like standing on two feet. And that itself made me a little bit nervous because when I first saw that cover art that leaked, I was like, oh no, this is not good. And I still don't really like The Sim on the cover art. I don't know what it is about The Sim on the cover. I think it looks like Scooby-Doo. There's just something about this render that feels almost too human to me, and I, I don't think I like it. So seeing that, I was really concerned, but I think after seeing the trailer, I felt a lot better about it, because they don't look like that in-game. Whatever it is about the render that feels off to me is not how they are in-game, so that's a relief. And then also, with the last pack being the wedding pack, that pack was a complete disaster. It, like, fully did not work on release. It was completely bugged. So as you can imagine, with all of those things combined, I was nervous about this werewolf pack release. But that brings us to our pros and cons list. What's good, what's not with the new werewolf pack? And I will say, this list is kind of flipped from my wedding stories review. As in, the wedding stories review had a longer cons list, and the werewolf pack has a much longer pros list. So that's a good sign. The werewolves create a sim is truly one of the best things they've added to this game in a very long time. The customization options are incredible. They basically took this feature from Cats and Dogs, where you could paint your pets, you could like add different coats, and change the colors and stuff, and they gave it to werewolves. So in cast, we've got like a million different coat options, lots of like more natural looking ones, but also some kind of interesting ones like this. And then on these coats, you can also change the color of the different features to sort of customize it a little bit more. Oh my god, this, this part is the most annoying thing about werewolves cast. The same problem happens with the vampires and spellcasters though, they just keep doing their like little animation every two seconds. But not only do we have the coat customization, oh my god, God, stop. But then we also have paint mode. And if you've got, oh my God. <laughs> And if you've got cats and dogs, you might know about this already. I will say I am not very good at this. I'm not the best artist, but using this paint mode, you can like completely customize how your werewolf looks. There's a ton of different brushes and different patterns. They've got like stencil tools and stuff. There's a proper color wheel to pick whatever color you want. And then you can literally paint whatever you want on your sim. Like I could write my name if I wanted to, or you could do something more interesting. For example, Simguru Kimmy on Twitter has been doing a lot of custom painted werewolves. Like look how cool this looks. She also painted this one recently. Recently, so hopefully that gives you like a little bit more context as to what you can do with this because I personally am incapable of using this to its full potential. All right, but in cast, your werewolf has obviously- Stop doing that. Stop doing that. Your werewolf has a werewolf form and also a human form. This works just like vampires and spellcasters and aliens and stuff. They also have a ton of different facial features and other things that you can adjust so you can really like completely customize these werewolves. I was not kidding when I said it had like the best customization in the whole game. But aside from actual werewolf customization, I think the clothes that came in this pack are really, really good. Dare I say that I think a few of these items might be some of my favorite cast pieces we've like ever gotten. And something else that I noticed and was so impressed by is that all of these items are actually properly tagged and properly tuned to fit both masculine and feminine frames. You know how before a lot of like different pairs of pants and things would look like really weird on the opposite frame they were intended for? They made the versions of all of these outfits to fit on both. So that super cute sweater with the high-waisted pants actually fits both masculine and feminine frames 
Sims. It doesn't look weird on either of them. And I am so glad they did that because so often they just don't fix it for the opposite frame and so it looks really weird on them and it really sucks. But this time it actually fits properly. There's also some really cute accessories like rings and bracelets and necklaces and stuff. The hairstyles are pretty cool. There's not too much for toddlers or children, but they did get a couple things and the toddlers have a really cute new onesie. And overall the cast feels very versatile to me. I can see myself using a lot of these things for a lot of different reasons. There's some great rags to riches type stuff and some more like cottage core type clothing, which both fit perfectly into my play styles. They also added this entire new category for body scars. Now these are obviously supposed to be from like werewolf fights and stuff like that, but the fact this category exists I think opens up a lot of potential for future body scars to be added. For example, I'd like to see things like top surgery scars maybe added to the base game. There just feels like there's a lot of new possibilities with this category here. I think overall Create a Sim is probably one of the best parts of this pack. I feel like you can't really argue with that considering how much customization is there. The new world Moonwood Mill that came with this pack is also really good. I will say it's not like huge, it's just five lots, but the area around these five lots really does seem big. Like for example, you can come all the way over here. This is where Greg lives. Your Sims can swim in this lake. This is like a werewolf sparring area. The top of this mountain is accessible. So a lot of these things feel like extra lots, even if they're not technically editable lots that you can play on. And I guess it's a bonus because you don't have to go through loading screens to get to them. The thing about this world that stands out to me the most is just how much better it feels than the other occult worlds. Like if you compare Moonwood Mill to say, for example, the vampires world, Forgotten Hollow is also just five lots, but like look at how much smaller this map is. The only real playable area is like this little town square in the middle. And there's not like any special gameplay involved. There's no like pack hangouts or like secret other villagers. It literally is just like this town square with some houses around it. I feel like you can't even compare this to the werewolf world. Glimmerbrook is a little bit better. It also has just five lots, but it has that secret world too. But even then, Moonwood Mill just feels so much bigger and it feels a lot more thoughtful as well. There's just one playable household, it's this one, but there's a lot of Sims that are in the world that aren't actually in the world. For example, this guy's got a daughter who leads the opposite pack. She's here. She's got a pack mate. These people have a pack mate. There's a bartender. It's kind of similar to Cottage Living, how there's like other townies that don't technically have houses, but they've got like active storyline and active gameplay involved to them. I think the other big factor in this world being so good is the lots being good. One of the biggest downsides, at least in my opinion, to vampires and Realm of Magic is how bad the houses are, especially Realm of Magic. Like those houses and that like magic lot being so terrible really take me out of the pack. It is very hard for me to go there and like visit that magic lot and not just be like, what, <laughs> what is this? It kind of ruins the immersion. And in this one, they used an actual simmer like James Turner, formerly known as the Sim Supply, built all the lots in this pack, so they are so much better. I think the fact that half of them are community lots really helps too, like having a bar and a library and having places to visit really helps with immersion, instead of just having like a couple empty vampire houses. They always try and include both a starter home and an empty lot in these worlds, so you've kind of got two options. You can just move straight in or build something yourself. But I won't lie, I kind of wish that they had built something for this empty lot as well. For me personally, I would have rather had another house here or maybe like another townie family living here as opposed to having an empty lot. I don't feel bad bulldozing it and getting rid of them, but I know some people do. So I understand why they do this. I just wish that considering how small the world is, there wasn't an empty lot here. So speaking of open accessible space, there's a bunch of tunnels that your Sims can explore and they work as like shortcuts that you can get through. So if you have them go in one and explore it, they might find an exit to a different one. And then once you've discovered it, you can just use those to hop between each other. You can also find collectibles down there in the tunnels. They are really, really cool. One of my other major pros on my list is how good the lore is in this pack. When I talk about lore, I mean like backstory and storyline, hidden secrets, stuff like that. And I think that in this pack, they did a great job of incorporating that. When you talk to all the townies, they can all come out with like different little hidden secrets and you'll get pop-ups in game telling you them. You can also read a bunch of werewolf books and they'll give you hidden secrets. So it feels like you can slowly discover the backstory of everybody and kind of what happened with the town and why they're here, what's going on. And I really, really like that about it. Also Greg, I have Greg as an entire bullet point on my list. Greg is this like really grumpy werewolf that lives on the outskirts of town. He doesn't have a proper house, like a lot you can visit, but he does have like a fake area you can visit and he kind of hangs around it and it looks like a house. You just can't actually go inside. Again, kind of like cottage living. And if you are a werewolf or a vampire, he will almost immediately beat you up, but you can like try and talk to him and get to know him a little bit better and you can woohoo with him. I literally made an entire video yesterday where I tried to speed run woohooing Greg. I'll post that soon, don't worry. There's like warning signs about Greg, that townies will tell you to avoid Greg. The Sims team has been like hinting to avoid Greg this whole time. And I love like the inside joke factor of Greg, but I also like having like an enemy in town. Enemies to lovers, Aramie. 
maybe? Or perhaps a lover, depending on how you go about it. But I just, I love the idea of Greg. The existence of Greg is so funny to me. Truly one of the best parts of the pack. And really, I think the main pro of this pack is the replayability. When I'm talking about recommending packs, I think a lot about how often you're going to use it. Because for example, with Strangerville, it's a kind of interesting pack. It's a fun storyline. It's got some kind of cute stuff, but realistically, it'll take you like two, three hours to finish. And then will you do that Strangerville storyline again anytime soon? I, I doubt it. But with Dine Out, for example, you could more easily incorporate visiting a restaurant into your everyday gameplay. So in my mind, I feel like Dine Out is a little bit more replayable. And in this case, I think Werewolves is really replayable. I don't think this is like a one and done kind of pack for quite a few reasons. I think number one, there's like four different branches of the aspiration and each one kind of has you go down a different path. But also there's two different packs. So you could try and join each pack separately. With that skill tree, there's so many different ways you could try and use your skill points and different abilities to try. I don't think this entire pack could be done with just one sim. And even if you did, you could probably come back with a different sim in the future and you would still find new things and still have fun doing it. I have a hard time recommending packs that I don't think have good replayability. But with this one, I really do believe that most people are gonna have fun playing this more than once. And that's really important to me. Overall, hands down, this is the best occult pack they have ever made for The Sims 4. I don't even think you can really compare it to vampires and spellcasters. It almost makes me feel bad for recommending vampires so much in the past because I was like so impressed by the skill tree and vampires, but really now that's kind of like the only thing it came with. That's just kind of the unfortunate part of that one coming first because now they can just build on it in future packs. But vampires feels tiny compared to this one. Werewolves has like 10 times more stuff in it. And it's all like better feeling stuff too. The world's better, it's bigger, the lots are better, the lore is better, the gameplay's better. There's just so much more going on in this pack. And you know what? Maybe the fact that I feel bad for recommending vampires now that I've played this isn't a bad thing because that just speaks volumes about how good this pack is, right? All right, but enough just rambling about how much I like it. Let's talk about the cons of the werewolves pack. I think number one, and this is very much a me thing, is that I probably won't use this pack very much. I know I just had this whole rant about how replayable it is, but I just don't really play with occults. I don't play with vampires, I don't play with spellcasters, and I probably won't play with werewolves. And that's not to say that werewolves is bad or worse than any other pack. It just like isn't really my thing. It doesn't really fit into my gameplay. And that's okay, because you might have an opposite experience, right? Like you might be obsessed with this and have a werewolf in every single household. And that's totally cool. Just for me personally, I don't see myself using this pack a ton in the future. It will not be like an everyday thing. But when I do choose to come back and play with it again, I will still have fun. And that's what I mean by replayability. It'll still be a new, exciting and fun experience each time. And it won't get like repetitive and boring. The other thing is that I don't really see myself building in this world very often. I do like the world that looks really cool. I just don't really build in this style very much. I guess maybe it'll inspire me to, but I don't really see myself building here a lot. I actually live in and build in Glimmerbrook like all the time. That's the realm of magic world. And I think that's because that world is like very normal. There's like nothing going on in the default part of the world except for ugly houses. And then all the magic stuff really happens in like that secret magic realm a lot. So maybe that's like a diss on the realm of magic world where it's not very immersive. So I feel fine just having normal Sims live there, but I probably wouldn't have normal Sims live here in this world. The other thing is that seeing all of this werewolf customization makes me so jealous for normal Sims. I thought this back when pets came out, but now that we can do it for werewolf Sims, I'm like, oh my God, why can't we paint humans then? If we've got this whole thing for pets and for werewolves, why not humans? It obviously exists and can be pulled from cats and dogs for Sims. So like, I would love to have that option. And genuinely, this pack makes me feel like actually sad about other occult types. I feel like vampires really got done dirty, but especially things like aliens and mermaids. Oh my God, the mermaids. I've always thought mermaids kind of sucked in The Sims 4, not because I don't like mermaids. I just feel like because they didn't get a skill tree, they're just not the same. Like the vampire spellcasters and now werewolves are so much more built out than mermaids are. Mermaids feel so empty, especially now that we have this like entire world just for werewolves and they've got all this lore and like interesting backstory and mermaids kind of just like exist in the water and that's all they do. There's no like storyline. How did they become mermaids? Why are mermaids in Sulani? No, they just, they just swim. But again, I think that's almost a good selling point for this pack and maybe not even a con because clearly it's a lot better than the other occults. I am truly so impressed by the werewolf pack. It's rare that I just sit here and have so many good things to say about a pack, especially when it's a pack that I don't think that I personally will use very much, but I can be objective and realize that so many of you are gonna have a lot of fun with this. And even I'm having a lot of fun with this. I just don't think I'm gonna use it every day and that's, that's fine. And so that brings us to the final question. Is this pack worth buying? I always try and answer this sort of question by thinking about would I buy this pack if I wasn't a Sims YouTuber? And this is sort of interesting because I came into this pack 
thinking that I wouldn't buy it and the answer would be no. But after playing it, I really, really enjoyed werewolves. I really don't want to send any of you down the wrong path and like get you to buy a pack that sucks. But honestly, I think that you'll have fun with it too. Especially if you're into werewolves and you like occult sims and stuff, you will really, really love this. I can like wholeheartedly recommend this pack to you. I think you'll have a great time. If you're not super into occult and you're kind of on the fence, I think you'd probably still have fun, but maybe hold off on buying it. I do think it's worth the money, but also maybe just like watch some more gameplay videos and kind of see if you think you're going to be into it. That's kind of my advice for anything though. Like maybe just watch like somebody else's video really fast and, and see if they liked it too. Because really only you know if you're going to have fun with the pack. We all have such different opinions and different like favorite things to do in The Sims. It's hard to give like a blanket recommendation, but I do think this pack has plenty of content to be worth the money. This is actually kind of changing my opinion on older game packs. I'm like looking back on vampires especially and being like, hmm, <laughs> these two things are not the same. This one is way better. This video feels like it was very long, but hopefully it was helpful. I'm curious to hear your thoughts in the comments now that you've seen more about the pack. Like, are you into it? Do you like it? Do you hate it? But on that note, I am going to end this video right here. Make sure you stay tuned to my channel because this week I've got a ton of more werewolves content coming. And today on my Twitch channel, like literally right now, I'm going to be live for many, many hours playing with werewolves. So if you want to pop in and see some more gameplay live, I'll have that link down below. And with that being said, I will see you all tomorrow. Bye everybody. Was this video all over the place? It feels to me like it was all over the place, but I really did try.